Today I'm tackling a problem I've been avoiding for about a year now, cooking veal. Is it ethical to cook veal? Am I a piece of sh for doing so? We're gonna answer one of those questions today. Welcome back to Board Aim. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Mitch May. We are working through Anthony Bourdain's Layout Cookbook, Every Freaking Recipe, for the first time. I don't know why I'm doing this. Today we're tackling veal, a pretty touchy subject in the world of ethics. But I did do some research on the subject, and I have a really cool story to tell you, meeting a fellow friend of Bourdain. And the dish we were making today, Blanquette de Veau. I'm not sure if the teaser's silent. This is like one of the most classic French dishes out there. A French girl I used to talk to actually said she loves this. She doesn't talk to me anymore completely fine. This is going to be interesting because it is all white. As Bourdain says, it's something of a statement. No parsley, nothing to add contrast. The white devil. I have Bourdain's book linked down below in the description. Let's make this thing. So we're gonna jump right into our veal. I'm gonna kind of give my take on the subject while I chop it up into chunks. As Bourdain says, we are looking for fly two inch squares of this stuff. I guess we start with what is veal. Basically, it is a baby cow. It has been slaughtered at six months old. Ooh, and is rather bloody. Now the big issue with one, how it's treated, it can get taken away from its mother almost immediately and given some nasty formula. And the biggie that kind of disturbs me is that they can get contained to a very, very small crate that allows them to move very little, thus rendering their muscle super tender. And also I have vivid memories of the sort of customers that would order veal. They sucked. It was usually a man who was tanned so artificially he matched the color of his Corvette seats and he had the manners of a goat, but PTSD aside. I did some research on veal. For one, the age is a factor, yes. They get slaughtered at six months. However, you know what also gets slaughtered at six months? Pigs. Pigs also live about the same lifespan as cows. And nobody's crying baby killer when they're munching on some bacon in their breakfast sandwich. So I can't help but feel there's no winning when faced with meat eating or really any kind of food today because there's just so much mass production. And then for me, of course, it comes to the issue of the calf getting taken away from its mother and fed some diet and a very cool thing that happened to me as i went to my local butcher to go and get this cut of meat i met a fan of bourdain his name is keegan and he is a kick-ass butcher and he shared with me where these cows are raised and they are not formula fed it's a dairy diet and at the end of the day i'm never really going to revel at the idea of something dying as previously said when i was tackling foie gras i'm no saint and this recipe this whole series is really to honor bourdain just cook his dishes and learn some cooking skills along the way the big question, is veal ethical? I'm not certain, but I am certain that nearly all of our food can be traced back to some pretty shady corners of the food production industry. But ethics aside, the veal has been chopped. Please fire away with your opinions on veal or its production. Maybe you know some better ethically raised veal than I do. It's an open conversation, damn it. There is no like bad thing you can say, except and like but other than that, Bourdain calls for the veal neck bones. They didn't have veal neck bones at the butcher I went to. So some beef neck bones. And another thing, all of this stuff, the veal, these bones was given to me by Keegan. He's the homie. He's the absolute homie. Ooh, these are nice. These are nice. These are nice. I think these are going to add some really nice flavor to our stock. And now let's knock out a little baby prep in an onion. We're going to cut it down the middle. Stud it with cloves. Ow. One, two. Onion studded with cloves. Looks a little strange. Next up, we have a little fickle task. Peel up these pearl onions. The trick I learned with these is to remove the tip and then blanch them and the skin comes off nice and easily. I'm just gonna go through all these, popping them out. While we're uh, pulling our onions here, it sounded like sexual in a really weird way. I'd like to do a comment of the week. April Bundy, who said, wow. April, I like your style. That took some time, but they yielded some cute, pretty, pearly onions. We're gonna cook these and some button mushrooms to the stove. Add one tablespoon of butter and cover with cold water and bring the water to a boil over high heat. Let it boil until the water evaporates. Repeat the same procedure with the mushrooms. Add one tablespoon of butter, them in water, just until they are tender. Probably should have scrubbed off the weird parts of these mushrooms. Onions are done. Bourdain wants no color on these. Honestly, those have a little color already, so that's it and those are gonna vibe out. Shroomy boys, these are a different story. There is a lot of water contained inside of there, so we're just gonna boil that out. In the meantime, I'm gonna start with a cold pan, very low heat, avocado oil, very little, and I want to render out the fat of these pieces. I'll show you. See, that's just like a lovely layer of fat. Try to get those chunks renderationed a little bit, and then we're gonna add our water to the pot. 
See, that's already too hot in my opinion. Take that off and just pick through here, looking for those fatty pieces that I saw. Get that back on and just let that render out. Let that do its thing. I don't wanna get any crazy color. Just making sure we're on low heat right now. So I'm gonna move this around, come back to it. Mushrooms, I'd say, are finished. They're not like perfectly. No, they're, they're actually beautifully cooked. I'm gonna toss these in with our onions because they're gonna go in the broth at the same time. Beep boop, super cute. Super cute. Back on our veal. Yep, no crazy browning. Just getting that fat out of there. A few more minutes and then we're gonna add everything to our pot here. So now everything goes into the party, including our nice bones. It's a lot of meat. I am super grateful for the help of Keegan because this is not cheap stuff at all. We're gonna add two Gallery stalks. Bourdain calls for one carrot. All I had were baby boys. So basically like a beef chicken soup. Our onion, our bouquet of garni. Hit that with some more water. Once we get filtered here. Bourdain calls for a boil and then a simmer. However, I remember way back when he said never boil a stock. This has the makings of a stocky, brothy kind of thing. So I'm gonna simmer this, skim it periodically, catch it in two hours. In the meantime, I'm actually gonna whip up another recipe. I'm gonna make a little tomato salad. I'll have the recipe right over here. I'm gonna have my own little Italio Americano twist. Okay, we're back. Let's strain this meat. Been exactly two hours. We're gonna pull our meat. Out of here. We definitely got some nice texture out of it. So Bourdain says it's supposed to be fork tender. That's pretty, pretty fork tender. Oh, you might be wondering why I'm wearing a black shirt. That's because I got crap on all of my other ones. <laughs> Might've cut the meat too small, not too sure. Kind of lost some form. Transition this to a plate. Kind of impressed with that maneuver. And now we're gonna strain out everything else. As you can see, we lost, oof. It's a little hot. I think I'm gonna give this like one or two more strains. Cheesecloth will be nice. Should we taste test? Yes. Spoon already in hand. It has the essence of all that stuff cooked, just needs salt, big time. Over to the stove to create our white, luscious, glazy stuff. In a medium pot, melt four tablespoons of butter over medium heat. Once it is foamed and subsided, whisk in four tablespoons of flour. Make sure it is completely incorporated. Cook over medium low heat, stirring frequently. Do not color the flour. Add one cup of the hot broth, whisking constantly. Add the remaining broth and bring to a boil. Cooking and stirring until the mixture begins to thicken. It's thick, but it could be thicker. Always could be thicker. We have too much broth and stuff to incorporate our other things. Add the pearl onions, mushrooms, and cream and our veal. Man, too much liquid. <whistles> too much liquid. No matter. Bring to a boil, reduce to a simmer, season with salt and white pepper. Don't sue me. I'm adding some nutmeg because it just feels right. Just a little. And heat for five to eight minutes. Just before serving, place the egg yolk in a small bowl and add about a quarter cup of the hot sauce from the stew. Whisk well, add this mixture to the pot. Add the lemon juice, stir. Do not allow the sauce to come to a boil. Season again as needed and serve with absolutely white rice. Sexy aesthetic. I was gonna use a white plate, but I couldn't find one. All of my white plates look like I got them at Aunt Gertrude's house, so I just used the black one. My sister found it, it's a good one. She will probably come. Rachel, comment down below right now because you say it all the time. You got me this plate and I'll pin it. It should be fork tender, meaning kind of very, yep. Very little freaking resistance there. A little bit of everything. To Tony, to the purity that is Blancat de Beau. This sauce was made to get freaking absorbed into rice, that's for sure. Maybe needing a little salt. I always fear oversalting things. My review, I was expecting it to be even richer than it kind of looks. It looks so chic. The veal, it does have a lighter flavor. It's definitely tender. The mushrooms are mild. The pearl onions, I love freaking onions. I just love onions. What I would do different, probably skim the scum of the bones and the meat for about half an hour and then add all our vegetables in there because the vegetables got coated and they floated to the top and that made it difficult to skim. And then I do wonder, can this work with beef or pork? Probably. Overall though, it's good, it's good. I mean, yeah, who would have thought French cuisine is good. As I said earlier, my homie Keegan, who bought this lovely veal and the bones for me, he gave me a sausage he made in-house. With that sausage, I made Where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Bourdain's Bourdain's Sunday Gravy from Anthony Bourdain's Appetites Cookbook. Some people have been asking me to do recipes there. Figure why not, I've had it for a while. The video will be right here. 
Come check it out. It's a very chill video. I kind of make little tweaks. I hope my Italian ancestors don't awake from the grave and find me. Thank you for spending your time with me. Think about subscribing, all that fun stuff. This was Back to Bourdain. Stay organized and clean up after yourself. You do the best you can.